Welcome to First Unitarian. We gather on Sundays to celebrate life, to witness to truth, and to be with each other in life's challenges and joys. All week long, we're building a community, one connection and one person at a time. We care for each other and our children, we grow our souls, and we transform our world. We're glad you're here. Welcome home. Please join me now in singing our opening hymn, Woke Up This Morning. Woke up this morning with my mind and it was stayed on freedom. Woke up this morning with my mind and it was stayed on freedom. Woke up this morning with my mind and it was stayed Welcome to worship at First Unitarian Church of Rochester. Our mission is through spiritual connection and community. We listen deeply to others and ourselves, open to wonder and transformation, and serve together with love and humility. We acknowledge with respect the Seneca Nation, keepers of the Western Door and part of the Haudenosaunee people on whose ancestral lands First Unitarian now stands. We are so excited to be together for our Greater Good service online today. Just a few announcements. We will be online through December, but we have in-person on Sunday mornings, but we have in-person services for Solstice on Saturday. There'll be an online Solstice service on Tuesday. On Christmas Eve, we will have three services in person. We will have our uh, children and family service, our rock service, and then the traditional one after that. After service today, we are offering UU 101, an introduction to Unitarian Universalism and to our church in particular. That'll be at 11.15 after the service. There'll be a Zoom link in the chat. And if you're not sticking around for UU 101, please stick around anyway to join in connecting in our breakout groups, connecting with fellow Unitarian Universalists, and of course, our special guests from our partner organizations that are receiving the greater good funds this year. I am Reverend A.J. Van Tyne. Leading worship today with me is Reverend Sherry Holiday Kwan, uh, Shannon Foos, Tommy Snell, a whole host of folks doing music and videos and other fun things, Jonathan Kyle of Elizabeth Kresha, uh, the Steinman family, the Gomes family, Ethan List, Eleanor Gall, uh, and many more. I am probably forgetting some very important names. Behind the scenes, we have our ushers and greeters um, on, on Zoom, making all of this possible. We have a chat chaplain on hand. If you're going through a hard time or you're worried about someone else, please reach out to the chat chaplain and connect with our pastoral care team. Let us now take a breath together as we settle into the sacred time and space created amongst our connections. 
please join me in our chalice lighting to say our unison words along with me. May the flame we now kindle inspire us to use our power to heal with love, to help with compassion, to bless with joy, and to seek liberation in the fullness of community. We continue with our children's chalice lighting words. We'll say them first and then we'll continue in ASL. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and mysteries of this great gift. toys, food, and impulse buys. Over the past 15 years, we've raised over half a million dollars to support organizations right here in Rochester. This is part of the way we serve together with love and humility. The Greater Good Project is a special tradition here at First Unitarian, and as members of the Greater Good Committee, Ethan and I are excited to participate in the service today. Children and adults come together this month to do something incredible. We invite each other to sacrifice half of the money we would have spent this month on holiday gifts, toys, food, and impulse buys. Over the past 15 years, we've raised over half a million dollars to support organizations right here in Rochester. This is part of the way we serve together with love and humility. Greater Good Project is a special By enabling tradition. people to make positive changes in their own community, which is really what Greater Good is all about. Each year, the project begins when a member of the community makes a suggestion. A committee of the youth and adults pour over all of the applications to narrow the field to just three finalists. The Greater Good Charter is inspired by the Christmas story, which tells us that a child shall lead us, and so our children and youth vote to select two great organizations. We're about to hear from these two amazing groups, Keeping Our Promise and the Friends of Ganondagon. 
both projects grow roots over of connection and create roots by enabling people to make positive changes in their own community, which is really what greater good is all about. So traditionally here at this church, we often use a red envelope to collect the donations for this special service. Red is a vibrant color of life and joy and is a color strongly associated with the holiday season. And Reverend Sherry, are there some other reasons why red envelopes might have some significance? Certainly. The holiday season here at First Unitarian begins with the greater good service. Usually, Hanukkah comes after it, though that wasn't the case this year, but the December holidays, the winter holidays begin with this service. But I'll admit that when I first arrived here, I was a little bit confused about the red envelopes because for me, the winter holidays culminate in and end in the Lunar New Year, which usually happens in January or early February. Red envelopes are a major part of that practice in Chinese culture, as well as in other Asian cultures. And a red envelope is given with money inside from parents to children, to newlywed, from employers to employees as a way of celebrating together. Red envelopes and the color red in Chinese culture means happiness, it means good fortune, it means luck, and it is something that you share with other people as part of this practice. So the red envelopes at First Unitarian are a little bit different. They're just card envelopes, but red envelopes have, for me, always brought a positive association, even though I give out a lot more than I receive. That seems to have been a part of the way that this tradition has carried me into this place and into this time. Thank you, Reverend Sherry. Now, for those of you all at home, you probably do not have a red envelope on hand with you. Luckily, we are Unitarian Universalists, innovators of rituals and not ones to shy away from adapting to unfolding developments, whether from the cutting edge of religious thought or from the necessities brought on by global crises. So to that point, rather than a en red envelope, I invite you to take a few minutes, a few moments now, find a red object somewhere in your house. I trust that somewhere in your house there is an object that is close enough to the color red that you can bring it over um, while we create worship. Um, but you could certainly have more if you felt like it. Um, and perhaps this is a good opportunity to send the youngest or most excited member of your family to go on this hunt. So you can go start looking at now. We'll have some music. Of, I can give you a few more ideas, right? It could be just a small object you can hold as ideal. It could be a piece of clothing. Um, it might be a fridge magnet. It could be a holiday decoration that you've already gotten out already. And Reverend Sherry and I are also going to look for and find maybe Sherry's already got something or, or a, a candidate. We're going to move around and, and look for our object. So we'll just take about two minutes here to, to scour and look for a red object that you can use uh, in this worship together. Do you have your red object? Oh, Reverend Chair, you've got many red objects there, it looks like. Beautiful uh, holiday flowers. I've got this bracelet that I always wear. And wonderful red objects. Let's go into gallery mode to show off our sea of red 
to rekindle our some of our joy together. So to do this in Zoom, you can go to the top right where it says view, the button should say view, and then you can go, normally it has speaker clicked or checked off, you can click gallery to have that checked off. And so if everyone can show off your red objects, oh, wonderful, I see some hearts, some clothes, some ribbons. I think I see like a Kindle case of some kind, little tchotchkes, mittens. Oh, everything's so beautifully red. A red pen, that's wonderful. An iPhone case, candle. What a joy to, to scroll through this gallery view and see so many things. Oh, I love the garden gnome. That's a wonderful, a boot with plants in it. This is amazing. I could go on all day, um, but of course we have uh, other activities uh, to get to here. So I'm gonna keep my object there on my desk. Now we are gonna need these objects later on the service. So hold on tight to them and don't wander off with them. Perhaps, again, perhaps a, a young or excited member of your family can be uh, the object keeper whose job it is to safeguard this joyful red object for your household until we use it later on in the service. But setting those near us, but aside for the moment, we're gonna need our hands available, invite us into a sort of embodied meditation, a pantomime meditation, our, th our theme for this season is rekindling joy. And we're gonna do a little rekindling a pantomime, a, a, a motion meditation. And you can use this anytime that it feels appropriate or, or helpful to you. There's gonna be three steps. I'll, I'll walk us through the steps of this meditation and then we will um, so get some practice and then we'll do it um, sort of for real at the end. So step one is just to collect our kindling. So you'll have to bear with me. It feels, it may feel a little, cheesy. Pantomime, of course, just means sort of pretend or imagining. So we're going to collect our kindling firewood, our sticks and everything. So just wherever you are, start gathering up an imaginary little pile of firewood and sticks. They can be big or small, knotted or smooth, however you imagine your fire kindling to be. And you can finish by creating a little pile and hold your hands around your pile. Maybe it's a really big pile of sticks and wood. Maybe it's small kindling, but small to make a mighty flame in any shape you want. So now, and these, as we gather these sticks, we are imagining this firewood. This is the abundance around us. We are gathering from the abundance around us as we do, as we gather our uh, giving and our money through this greater good service. But a pile of sticks is not a fire, so we need to add heat. So first, clasp your hands together. Feel your palms, feel your other hand. Notice how it feels. Does it feel warm? Maybe your hands feel cool to the touch. In any case, it's probably not warm enough for a fire quite yet. So the step two is to rub our palms together, rub your fingers together, generating the heat. And once those are nice and warmed up, hold them maybe a half inch apart and you can feel the warmth between and within your hands. This is the energy of life, the energy that we bring by our very bodies, our very beings, our very souls. Now, all we have to do is take that heat and that energy and put it back into our pile of sticks. And of course that will ignite a fire. And so maybe it starts small wiggling your fingers and then you move your hands up and down to embody the flames of the fire that we have just lit. You can do this as create as big a flame as you like, as joyful, or again, maybe it's small and just a little energetic. However, if it's a tiny tea candle light or a big raging bonfire, all types of fire are welcome and beloved. So you can see is when we combine the energy of life with the gatherings of abundance around us, we rekindle joy and set a cozy fire to keep us warm through the winter. So let's do that one more time. Collecting the kindling and the firewood. We gather from the abundance around us, the abundance we are blessed to receive. We have our pile. Now we need to add the heat. Clasp your hands together, feel them. Maybe they're warmer than they were last time and rub them together. Generate that friction, that heat, that warmth from the energy of life. 
and then put that heat together with the abundance that we've gathered and we create fire, start small at first and then cascades, maybe joins with others fires to create a big raging bonfire together. And this is how we combine the energy of life with the gatherings of abundance to rekindle joy. Now let's gather around our fires we've just made with this warm glow and listen again to our very own bell choir. There are many routes to travel and many routes to grow, many ways to build connection and many ways to serve the greater good, to support one another as humans on earth. We've invited our partner organizations to prepare a video each to share with, other, to share with us this morning, the transformative and critical work that they are each doing, the ways that they are growing roots deep down, the way they are creating roots of connection from one person to another. To share this critical work they're doing, we are honored and joyful to support these organizations and their projects. We will now hear from Keeping Our Promise and then after musical break from Friends of Ganondigan. and others worked on women's empowerment projects. All of these Afghans risked their lives supporting U.S. programs. Driving for change, roots to joy. Keeping our promise helps to resettle families who served the U.S. in conflict and war zones.
our current focus is to help wartime allies from Afghanistan start new lives in Rochester. Many of our Afghan friends served as combat interpreters for our military. Some worked as carpenters and in maintenance. We relied on Afghans as cooks for our troops. Others worked for Skatistan. And others worked on women's empowerment projects. All of these Afghans risked their lives supporting U.S. programs. With the withdrawal of the U.S. from Afghanistan, it is now time for us to help those who helped us. Our families arrived with nothing but a few pieces of clothes. Keeping our promise pays for a family's first food and rent. When our families arrive, they are given bikes so they can get to the food store. But a bike is not enough in Rochester. A family needs a car to expand job and affordable housing opportunities. Many Afghans walked, relied on public buses, taxis, or motorized rickshaws. More than 50% of our friends have no driving experience. They need driver's education. Many employers will not hire someone without a driver's license and a car. Driving for change will overcome obstacles for our friends in getting their license. With this grant, we will translate the New York State Driver's Manual into Pashto and Dari. Our focus will be on both husbands and wives learning to drive. Volunteers will show the type of gas to use, how to check oil, antifreeze, brake, and transmission fluid levels. Canadagua Driving School is offering discounted lessons with an interpreter in the car. The goal of Driving for Change is to have our Afghan friends obtain their driver's license within six months of arriving to Rochester. Zaman, Saddam, and Ramat were able to get jobs as electrical workers because they had a driver's license. Anyat and Salim's lives were transformed when they got their license, cars, and went to work at a dealership. A license in a car helps an entire family thrive. A license in a car changed my life, Fazel. In December 2020, Keeping Our Promise committed to helping 40 individuals from Afghanistan resettle in Rochester in 2021. Since December 2020, we have helped resettle 200 individuals from Afghanistan. We have a big task ahead, but families can accomplish their goals for their new lives with your help. Thank you to the First Unitarian Church for this transformative gift. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down. My roots go down. Willow swaying through the storm, I am a willow 
Nyamiskeno swagwego, ni gyaso titoyo, onundawaga ni ya, ni kanonge ganondagen. Hello and greetings. My name is Ansley Jemison. I am a member of the Seneca Nation and a member of the Wolf Clan of the Seneca Nation. I am currently serving as the cultural liaison for Ganondagan State Historic Site in Victor, New York, and I just wanted to thank the First Unitarian Church of Rochester for their generous support in regards to their Greater Good project. One of the ideas for this project was we have a group of young people that are in the Seneca Nation. They're in about the 13-year-old age range, so the, we don't have a lot of resources for these young people. And one of the things that's happened is even though these children have grown up on a reservation or in their territory, they may not be as connected to their community as one might think or one might hope. So there is a project that's happening, which is called the Sachem Challenge, which is currently taking place on the Seneca Nation territory. And it's being run by a gentleman who is helping these young people grow and develop life skills. And so one of the things that we thought would be great to do was to partner with this group and bring these students and these children to Ganond again, which is an original Seneca homeland, an original Seneca t site. And we want to connect these students to give them an idea and understanding that this is their home. This is where they are from. This is where their origin is. And have them carry out some of the duties they're already a part of and have that happen here so that they find this as a connecting place. So we thought that it might be important to partner with some of the students that are affiliated with Flower City Arts and have them connect with some indigenous students and then do a larger, greater edge of the wood ceremony with them and properly welcome them and have them be welcomed into the original territory. State historic site be an anchoring point for both indigenous and non-indigenous students and finding a place of refuge. This town, the name Ganond again, is called or represents a village surrounded by the substance of white. And the idea and the concept that is being put out from this place is the message of peace and understanding. So with that, we use the good mind. We try to preach and practice the good mind that we're here. And we want people to take away good feelings and good thoughts and reconnect with their mother, the earth, at Tenoa. So when they come here to Ganond again, they come here, they go through the cleansing process where they are wiped down and they are traditionally welcomed through a protocol and then we'll have a number of activities for them to participate in to be properly welcomed and also then giving them the duty and responsibility of being a good guest, becoming a steward of the land. The concept of this is to bring together unity, to develop community building, and to understand and find different ways that we can all partner and make this place a better place and a better community to live in. As Eleanor and Ethan mentioned earlier in their introduction to the greater good service and project that we engage in here at First Unitarian, our two partner organizations this year, these two projects, they both aim to grow roots of connection and create roots that enable people to make positive changes in their own communities. 
in lots of ways, these two partners and these two programs feel really different from each other, but there is much they have in common. And in a period of time in which we have thought a lot about what it means to be home, in a period of time in which we have thought a lot and tried to practice staying in one place, both of these projects aim to heal the consequences of displacement and in particular displacement driven by American imperialism. The Edge of the Woods program that helps connect Seneca youth with ancestral practices helps heal a rift, a break in a line that should not have happened. And yet these roots that go down into the earth, even when children and young people are not far from their ancestral homes, reflects a way in which cultural practices and the ability to pass down the ancestral lineage, lineages, the life skills and ways of being in community have been disrupted. These are not unhealable wounds, not history set in stone, but practices that we are invited into again and again. These ways of being are things that can be retaught. And our friends at the Friends of Ganondigan are working to create programs to heal those rifts, to be living ancestors, those who pass down and nourish the roots that are growing. The roots of connection that we create in keeping our promises program are similarly not things that happen automatically, not things that exist simply because there are roads and cars and drivers here in Rochester, but ways of being that require practice and nourishment, that require training and require help. In all of these ways, you have community programs striving to heal wounds that already exist, but are not irreparable. Here you find communities enacting positive changes with their own people in our community. Our broader attempt to be a part of something greater, our broader attempt to create good wherever we go, merely plucks the strings of a web of connection that exists all around us. Threads connecting people, connecting us to our history, connecting others to cultural practices all their own, are threads that exist beyond, above, and beneath us. We are invited into the Greater Good Project each and every year as a way of acknowledging our place in nourishing these roots. Our seasonal theme, Rekindling Joy, it points to the idea that joy is something each of us carries within us it's not mere temporary happiness. It is something that exists on a spiritual level in relationship and in a deep and cultivated way, not merely from moment to moment. But as Reverend AJ led us in earlier, this practice of kindling warmth, of gathering up bits that are all around us, sticks in our yards after last year's or last night's winds or the metaphorical reminders of all that is good in our lives. That practice of rekindling, well, it's something we have to nourish, have to engage in regularly. Joy is not temporary happiness, a fleeting mood, but it's also not something that exists without exercise and practice. It is something we fuel and feed. And when it comes to roots, that go down into the earth, water. And when it comes to roots, or as I hear half of us say, roots or routes, when it comes to those, well, we make those roads by traveling them. We engage in the practice of rekindling joy, engage in the practice of fueling the greater good by practicing it, just like everything else in spiritual community. This greater good program, as you know from our youth who not only 
voted for our partner organizations, but organized, talked with many of you, and worked on the committee that helped select and bring these projects and programs to us. As you heard from them, over the last 15 years, we've raised over half a million dollars. And we collect donations, we collect that amount, whatever it is that you and your family have decided and discerned together to give to the greater good from now until the beginning of January, until Three Kings Day on January 6th, or as my parents who are tuning in would remind me, my dad's birthday. You do have time, but the bulk of our giving each and every year happens right now during this service. Donations to the greater good can be of any amount. There's no amount that's too small. And though theoretically there perhaps are amounts that are too big, we're not asking you to miss your mortgage payment for the greater good. We do ask that you give an amount that feels thoughtful, that feels like a sacrifice, that shifts the way you engage in your holidays. This program isn't simply about giving to other organizations, though we do hope to help them fulfill their missions as they align with our mission, but also it helps us engage in a process of living our holidays in line with our values, of tapping out of the noise of more decorations or stocking stuffers that will get thrown away after an hour or a dish that nobody likes, but you think will impress somebody at the table. It invites us to tap out of that noise and tap into a deeper meaning, to engage in practices that together as a family or together with you and your partner or all by yourself as someone who has the ability to take a look at how you spend and how that reflects your values. We ask that you give half of what you would have spent on travel, on gifts, on food, on decorations, and make the greater good part of your holiday traditions. So there are lots of different ways to give, Venmo and the Simple Church app and writing a check and through our website, which is probably the most straightforward, but you don't have to take my word for it. Some of you are already doing it. Hey, we should give to the greater good. That's a great idea. How should we do it? Uh, let's use Venmo. Venmo? Uh, just go get your phone. Okay. Got it. What do I do now? Maybe it's best if I do it. Here, I'll get my phone and then we can just... Uh, this is a calculator. Wait, no. This is a picture of a calculator. Why do I own this? Uh, wait, Leon, what are you doing? Well, isn't this greater good? Sonia, help! This is how you give to the greater good. It's that easy. And here are the real prayers. Oh no, it's for the greater good. Let's give to the greater uh, good. We always give to uh, the greater good. Let's give them more this year. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Now it's good. your turn. See, donations are flooding in already. Look at these. Okay, where are these all coming from? Okay, what? Ah, here we are. Beautiful. All of the donations already flooding in through the internet and other means and materializing as our beloved red envelopes. Let us bless these gifts. I hold this basket of red envelopes to symbolize these gifts that have been given freely and lovingly, as the givers believe in something bigger than themselves. The givers believe in the greater good. Blessed are these gifts for the good they will bring. Blessed are those able to give from their generosity. 
Blessed are those who are not able to give to this project. For all the other times they've given and for their support in other ways, all the ways that we build roots of connection to one another. Blessed are those who will benefit from this generosity. May all those who had a hand in this greater good collection and the good work it will do be blessed. May it be so. The gift of money we give away, but we will also will leave this service with something, certainly a warm feeling, but also an object, a token, a reminder to you that you have sacrificed for the greater good, something to extend the spiritual practice of the greater good season beyond this one Sunday. A reminder of this service and the joy that is possible to rekindle when we are together. Of course, you already have this object. You have this token. It is your red object. So make sure you have your red object. Go ahead and grab it, get it ready. Excellent. May this object, may all these objects that each of us have, red and vibrant, be reminders of the abundance that we share in this life. They remind us of the energy of life within us and among us all. May it bring joy to you and yours and all who will be touched by the collective generosity of this community. And now a brief rhyme, if you'll indulge me, that you can use to bless your objects yourself or to use in any other occasion. I say rhyme, Reverend Cherry pointed out that it's not exactly a rhyme, it's a bit of a slant rhyme, but bear with me and I'll, I'll put the chat, I'll put the, the text into the chat if I can find it. Here we go. Bless this object of vibrant red, help remind me of joy to spread. If I am in a hopeless mood, remind me of the greater good. So mood and good or good may or may not rhyme depending on how you say it, but just remember if you can keep in your mind red and spread, mood and good, or you can just copy and paste it from the chat to remember or print out, keep it with your object. Bless this object of vibrant red, help remind me of joy to spread. If I'm in a hopeless mood, remind me of the greater good. May it be so, blessed be. Please join, Please join me now, join me now in the words, the words to extinguish our chalice. our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. I invite you to raise your hands and reach out to the edge of your screen 
as we connect with each other, these invisible threads always there, yet being tugged on by our presence and our force. We arrive onto this earth already good. We arrive with a core of joy. Having kindled a warmth among us, let us go out into the world to set it aflame and to bring peace and the greater good. Amen. <laughs>